god! It, <laughs> it could have been 40 minutes of farming sims and generic looking JRPGs. You give me a new Zelda, I'll give you a 10 out of 10. You Do you play a Zelda? Best direct so ever. I don't know what you want from me, guys. They gave me not only a brand new... 2D Zelda. They gave me a, a Zelda where you play as Zelda. They even reimagined the gameplay and it's kind of like a 2D Tears of the Kingdom, make it your own adventure and kind of get weird with it style game. And I, I, I love it. That's actually really cool. But on top of that, after eight years of nothing, of literally Nintendo just saying, hey, we're, we're going to make Metroid Prime 4. And then a couple years later, Nintendo saying, hey, not really going the way that we thought it would go. So we're going to scrap everything we've done and start again. And then said nothing for almost a decade. I, oh my God. Full on dropping gameplay. Straight into gameplay, mind you. No messing around, no pissing around. Just straight in the gameplay. And it looks actually really good. I mean, there are, I mean, obviously you're gonna have people clowning on it online because it doesn't look like the latest blockbuster PlayStation 5 visual fidelity ray tracing 4K 120 hertz. Like, yeah, it looks like it's on Switch. But having said that, it actually looks really good for Switch. I'm getting ahead of myself. We have a 40 minute direct to go through. I can't hide my excitement. I can't hide the fact that it was a banger direct because of the awesome things that we got. But I also wouldn't blame anyone for thinking it was a very slow direct. There was a lot of things that made this an A tier, 10 out of 10 star awesome direct. But around that, was a lot of eh. Decorate your island however you'd like. Oh, more. it's Animal Crossing. So this event kicked off with Mario and Luigi Brothership. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> Which was a perfect way to start it and also set expectations fairly high for some cool things to come later. If you never played one of the old Mario RPGs, uh, there was a lot of them obviously on handheld systems before the Switch, like on DS and 3DS. They haven't made a new one in this series in nine years. All right, from there, we had the NES Remix Classic World Champion Edition. Uh, we already knew this was happening, but there are some cool things in here, like competing with people online, going head to head. <laughs> Woo! The final battle of Fairy Tale is about to begin. All right. We got our first JRPG looking game of the day. Uh, this is Fairy Tale 2, which great anime. Uh, I heard good things about the first game. I can't help but look at this game visually and Fiore, oh, team God. Not just really look forward to the Switch 2. You know, it's just, I don't know, I'm not saying anything bad. Just really looking forward to the Switch 2. <laughs> uh, the next game had me in the first half. It's made by the Final Fantasy series creator and it looked really good until it started getting into the gameplay. Then it just looked like another bravely default looking, default looking <laughs> kind of game. Game. You can also send enemies you've encountered <laughs> across on the bingo, bro. And yeah. fight them later. All right, here's a quick one. We'll do generic looking JRPG. <laughs> I canceled for that one, too. Enemies we can cross watch. off that JRPG <laughs> square that I made. <laughs> kind of a dime a dozen, unfortunately, at this point, which is fine. And JRPG fans are very well fed. Just, I'm a little burned out. Surprised to see them supporting Switch Sports still. They added basketball. Okay. You know, after recent events, I kind of expected this direct to be a lot of indies. Just seems to be where we're at right now in the industry. And again, that's fine. But I have to say, we didn't really get that many. This was one of the only indie looking games I saw. And it actually visually looks very appealing. Uh, Mio, Memories in Orbit coming next year. Yeah, actually kind of looks pretty awesome. Hello Kitty Island Adventure. This is a mobile. It's been a mobile game for a long time. And it's literally Animal Crossing. It is just... Animal Crossing New Horizons, but with Hello Kitty, and apparently it's awesome. Apparently it's actually really good. It's actually a really good Animal Crossing style game, and a lot of people like it, and this is a timed exclusive for consoles coming to Switch. I actually think a lot of people are gonna like this game more than they realize. A uh, weird Looney Tunes style sports game, uh, Among Us DLC, which the only reason we all knew this direct was happening today is because Among Us leaked this announcement a week ago. And so we'll, 
we all knew the direct was going to be today. So thank you, Among Us. <laughs> then we got another JRPG generic looking yokai watch monster hunter stories looking game i don't really know what's going on with this one i was really hoping to see a new donkey kong we have donkey kong being added to the theme park in uh, universal studios nintendo land world whatever i was hoping with that they'd make a new donkey kong game and maybe they still will we are seeing some donkey kong here which is a good start to that i guess yes I'm recording a video right now. Are you okay? What do I gotta do to get you on Twitch to play Four Swords? Tonight? Are you gonna be live tonight? I could be. Are you live right now? Yeah. Okay. I, I gotta go finish my video. I will play with you tonight. Go finish your video. Okay, bye. See, there's so much hype and excitement around this right now. Donkey Kong, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a re, it's a re, remaster, remake, whatever. Well, that's another reason why people were kind of burned out. I think on this direct, it's just a lot of remakes and remasters and ports and old games coming to the Switch. It's, you know, we're in that last year, and I didn't really expect too much out of the direct because we're in the last year. So even the fact that we got those cool things that I talked about that we got is huge. All these remakes and remasters, they should just really be considered a sprinkling on top of the already awesome Switch library that we've amassed over the last decade. That said, uh, it looks awesome. It actually looks like Tropical Freeze. It looks like, it looks good. I like it. Dragon Quest 3. Alright. You know what? Yeah, yes. I like it. Speaking of remakes and remasters, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake. Now, I am also a little burned out on remakes, especially of like old JRPGs getting remakes, and even this HD 2D style, that Octopath Traveler really blew up and made super popular. Now we have so many games and series, new games and series being made in this style, old games and series being remade in this style. It's getting a little overdone, but having said that, it's a gorgeous style, and I've always wanted to play the original Dragon Quest games, but I've just kind of felt like they're maybe a little bit too old and I wouldn't be able to get into them now in 2024. But seeing this Dragon Quest 3 in this style kind of, kind of slaps, kind of perfect, kind of really makes me want to play it. At the end of this trailer, they even revealed, they pulled out and said one and two HD 2D remakes are coming. No! Oh! That's cool. I like that, actually. Funko Pop has a game. Why? I don't know. It looks like Skylanders with Funko Pop. The only thing I really appreciated here was seeing, like, Scott Pilgrim characters, Shaun of the Dead characters. Just don't really expect to see those franchises in amongst some larger franchises. They feel more niche, and I really appreciated that. Visually, though, it looks horrible. Like, just horrible. I don't know what this game was, but it also looks like an Animal Crossing game. It looks like the second Animal Crossing game on the Switch. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Another Metal Slug spin-off game. They're doing a lot of those. Darkest Dungeon 2. Technically, I think, the second indie in this event. Uh, unless I missed one. And Darkest Dungeon was huge. That was a huge, very popular game. Very popular indie that people really loved. So seeing the second one get some love in here, I'm totally down for. Then we got the next really big thing that I haven't really talked about yet. Although my friend did just call me because Link to the Past Four Swords. Now... This is cool, coming to the Game Boy Advance. Now, I know what you're thinking, but hold on, let me, shut up, let me, because there's something you might not have thought about yet, and it's, wh it's why my friend just called me. All right, so I get it, this is an old game coming to the Switch, why do we care, big whoop, right? Well, it's Zelda, shut up, shut up your face, what are you doing, you being disrespectful? Four Swords was a co-op Zelda game, and back in the day, it was kind of a pain in the ass. You had to have like four GPAs, you had to link cable them all up, and let's be real, at best, if you were lucky, you had a brother in your house that had a Game Boy Advance and you could play two-player co-op. But with these Nintendo Switch Online games, they're adding online capabilities to them, so now, with ease, for the first time ever, you can play Link to the Past online with up to three friends. You can do four-player co-op online. That's actually achievable now. Oh, that's so cool. And on top of that, they also added uh, Metroid Zero Mission, which is an awesome Metroid game. Uh, uh, sh a sign of things to come later in this direct, I suppose, now that I'm looking at it. Turok, and on top of that, perfect 
Dark. We already have a new Perfect Dark coming. There's a lot of Perfect Dark hype right now. And they added four player split screen versus combat mode to Perfect Dark. Yo, Nintendo those Switch Online Plus expansion pack members later Whoa, today. That slaps, actually. That's that's a W right there. I'm excited for that too. I, I'm probably going to stream either this or Four Swords tonight on Twitch if you want to come watch twitch.tv forward slash beat em ups with my friend Bob or Scoot or both of them. I don't know. Then we got the next J. RPG <laughs> generic looking thing that I honestly don't care about. Then we get another port, a uh, Street Fighter port. Dork. New Mario Party! Get ready Party. to jump into the biggest selection of Mario Party minigames yet oh! in Super Mario Party Jamboree. <laughs> what? Why? This game, I, I mean, I can only compare it to like Mario Party Ultimate in a way. Like it's not necessarily all old Mario Parties coming together in one, but more like just the biggest, most expansive take on a Mario Party game. It looks like they're pulling all of the stops. Not only are there really cool new looking boards, just really creative maps and ideas that I've really missed in Mario Party recently. I feel like they have not been super creative with the map ideas. Ah! Then they said there's 110 mini games. What is Up this? 20 players can go head to head online in the Coupathlon mode. On the what? Try your <laughs> best to come out on top. This is awesome. <laughs> this looks like the best Mario Party in a long time. Hate the name if I'm being honest. Love the concept. Oh, that comes October 17th. In fact, something I didn't really even mention is that all of these games really launch this year, including the next one. Oh, oh. I'm pissing right now. When this came up, I didn't know what I was looking at. Is this is this Link's Awakening like two? Or is it a remake? That's Link Between Worlds 3. Wait, do you play as Zelda? Echoes of Wiz- Oh! I'm already on board, right? I'm already on board. I'm looking at this visually and concept. I'm already on board. Give it to me now. Then Anuma comes out and says, we wanted to kind of re-envision the way that this game plays. Cause what are we gonna do? We're we gonna have Zelda attacking with a sword. Once you learn an echo of something, you can recreate it whenever you'd like. All right, hold on, what's Even happening here? Even if there's a wall blocking your path, you can create echoes of tables to get a leg up. You can clone a table and you can use it as a platform. You can clone a bed and use that as a platform. You can clone a cube of water and then use that as a platform. You know, kind of showcasing how many different ways you can get around platforming in the game. But then they go into combat. You could pick up and throw a rock echo, for example. <laughs> okay, That's I like not that. all though. You can also create echoes of monsters. Okay, now we're After getting doing somewhere. So, they'll fight by your side. Okay, I like that. That's cool. Mon then they went on to just show an array of different things that you can clone and the way that the things interact with the world around you and essentially just giving you all of this freedom in how you battle and how you platform or how you solve the puzzles. And in a game like Zelda, which traditionally in the past has been very combat and puzzle focused, but usually there's only one way of solving things in these 2D Zelda games. We've seen the 3D Zelda games try and break out of that mentality and that idea recently with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom specifically. How can we have players interact with this game in a multitude of different ways so that everyone's adventure looks different so they can craft and build and explore and solve puzzles their way. Now they've taken that to 2D and they've gone, how can we do that in 2D? Well, what if you play with Zelda and you use her magic to kind of just create whatever you want? I love it. I love that they're kind of meshing that idea that Zelda both 3D and 2D is going in this direction of freedom and solving puzzles the way you want to solve them. Because I feel like that is such a rewarding concept and rewarding idea. This is September 26. Right. That's really cool. A Nintendo Switch Lite system inspired by the Legend of Zelda series will also be available at Something launch. else I have we to hope buy? You're looking forward. Then we get... Or Lego Horizons. I mean, we haven't talked about that as a community. You guys haven't heard me talk about that unless you watch the podcast. Go watch the Nintendo podcast. I don't like how excited you are about it. Lego Horizons got revealed recently, but at the end of even Summer Game Fest, they, they said it was coming to Switch and here it is. Yeah, I mean, it's Lego. Of course, it, it will work well on Switch. It'll look great on Switch. It's just seeing the Sony Horizon IP on Switch is a little bizarre. Oh. 
just because you can doesn't mean you should. You know what I mean? Dre coming to Switch, showing the Switch's age here quite a lot. This game looked gorgeous when I played it on PlayStation, and it does not look gorgeous here. It looks very rough around the edges. I'm always down for people getting to play games they couldn't otherwise, because maybe they only have a Switch. But if you can play this game anywhere else, it is, it is worth the experience of seeing how beautiful this game is, and it's not doing it justice here on Switch. The third uh, cozy sim Animal Crossing style game. It's not really Animal Crossing, really. It looks like very cooking focused, actually, but a cozy Lord of the Rings Hobbit game. Cases. Enjoy all new hand-drawn character visuals from the original series character designer or swap to the original. All right, cool. Um, the creators of Dangan Rapa have made a game. 100 days. All right, cool. Then we got another JRPG. <laughs> Decision you make will dramatically alter the course of the story. Safeguard your empire's future. Okay, I zoned out for a second. Legacy. We then went in to our final announcement. I'm so scared. Is it two or is it four? I was completely beside myself with this announcement. I didn't know what I, my br I didn't know what I was thinking. The second I saw this green text pop up, I knew it was Metroid. And then my brain just went into overdrive trying to figure out, is this Metroid Prime 4? Because it looks like Metroid Prime 4, but I didn't want to believe it. Is it four or is it two? Is it two or is it four? Is it four? Is it two? <laughs> I can't, I honestly can't tell. I honestly don't know. <laughs> what I'm looking at. It's got to be two, right? I'm so confused. It looks incredible. I don't recognize any of it, so it's got to be four. It looks like Halo. <laughs> we, I've had this thought that they're going to do Metroid Prime 2, the remaster of that, while we're waiting for four. So in my, my mind, I'm like, is this two or is this four? And it looks just so much like the original Metroid Prime. I can't believe it. I can't believe they said nothing about this game for like eight years until today where they just drop a ton of gameplay and a new title card. I oh my God. I told you, I told you, I told you. It's coming next year, which some people in my chat were bummed out when I was watching it live because these were all games that were supposed to be coming this year and this is coming next year. But guys, guys, we we didn't even know if this game was still happening. So, so, so excited. So excited to play a new Metroid Prime game in 2025. 20, and it's coming next year! Oh! I know that like visually this game isn't going to be up to standard of other FPSs in the industry, right? Of other games that are coming out on Xbox, PC, PlayStation. But you got to remember, this is still a Nintendo game. The their whole thing is that they're just fun to play. And I know that this game is kind of pushing it visually and graphically as far as what Nintendo usually makes. Usually Nintendo doesn't care about graphics and they kind of go more cartoony visuals and fun, lighthearted goofy wacky you know it's the gameplay that's fun and that's why we love it this kind of rides the line metroid kind of wants to be the fun gameplay and the innovative fps but also wants to be visually impressive for the hardware so it is kind of riding that line but we are working within the switch and we have to keep our expectations in line the game is going to be fun and it's still going to look really good considering the hardware that it's on i really hope that it, there's like a Switch 2 crossover release and the Switch 2 version maybe runs a little better or looks better, kind of like how uh, T Breath of the Wild did on Switch and Wii U. I still think these early screenshots are very impressive considering, <laughs> considering you, I mean, you want to skip around and look at other things from this direct like this, this, or this, and then go back to this. <laughs> Let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't even feel real. That's all for today's Nintendo Direct. I'm honestly, I don't even know what to say. I I am actually kind of beside myself with this Direct. Uh, yeah, this Direct was awesome. Uh, <laughs> I really liked it. Uh, obviously, I'm most excited for, well, you know, I'm... <laughs>
kind of torn between Zelda and Metroid Prime 4. I don't know what my, I don't really know what I'm most excited for here. Really good. I think this was a perfect June Direct. I think considering we're at the tail end of the Switch and we really didn't expect to get anything, all things considered, for the last year of the Switch and possibly one of the last Directs we'll ever have, this was a banger. And uh, uh, if this is the way that the Switch goes out, it went out literally with a bang. It actually gets kind of perfect if it goes out with finally getting Metroid Prime 4, because that kind of started the Switch hype and will end the Switch hype. You know what I mean? I love it. Good job, Nintendo. Uh, thank you all for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you're most excited for from the direct down below and why is it Zelda or Metroid? Part two to my Australia vlog will be out in a couple of days and uh, I'll see you tonight on Twitch. Thanks for watching. I love you all. Bye.